Hey there, today I'm going to be showing you six new slow cooker recipes. All of these slow cooker recipes today have simple ingredients that you probably already have on hand. They are also family friendly, so I really hope you enjoy it, and let's go start slow cooking. We're starting today out by making these barbecue pork chops, and one of my favorite parts about these pork chops is they're only three ingredients, so that makes them extra amazing. To this little bowl, I just added one cup of barbecue sauce. Next, I'll add one cup of apricot jam. I know that might sound silly, but that is going to make these pork chops have so much great flavor. I just whisked these two ingredients together. Now over to my bone-in pork chops. I have about six of them. I'm going to season them on both sides sides with salt and pepper and then I'm going to place them in my slow cooker. After I poured that barbecue and apricot jam mixture all over the pork chops, I tried to spread it out as even as possible. This goes on low for about six to seven hours, and here's the finished product. I served mine over a bed of white rice with green beans on the side. These are fall apart tender. They have amazing barbecue flavor, and they're also almost sweet in a way. I definitely recommend this recipe. Now we have to make these meatball subs. They have to be my favorite meatball subs of all time. So to the bottom of my slow cooker, I just added 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes along with a teaspoon of basil, fourth a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of minced garlic. If you're wondering what we're doing at this point, we're actually making the marinara sauce. And then I added three tablespoons of olive oil with a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar. Whisk this all together to get all of the ingredients combined well. And of course, you could always use frozen meatballs in your slow cooker, but these homemade meatballs are out of this world and they're so easy to make. So to get them started in this bowl, I added my one pound of ground beef. It was 93.7. You do want super lean ground beef like that. Along with one egg, three fourths cup of Italian style breadcrumbs, a tablespoon of minced garlic, three tablespoons of fresh parsley, and if you don't have fresh parsley on hand, you could skip that or add in a teaspoon of dried parsley. Now I'm mixing this all together, and once it's well combined, I am just going to be rolling this ground beef mixture into little meatballs just like this. After I was through rolling out my 15 to 16 meatballs, I brought them over to the marinara sauce and I'm just going to plop them right in there. This will cook on low for about seven hours once it is through slow cooking. Just check in the center of one of the meatballs to make sure it is no longer pink. So after I'm finished with that, I brought them over to my sub rolls and I'm going to be placing about three to four meatballs in each sub roll and then sprinkling plenty of mozzarella cheese on top. I placed this under my broil broiler in my oven for about two minutes to make the cheese nice and melty. Here's my meatball sandwich. Everything had so much flavor. The meatballs were nice and tender and every bite was the perfect bite for this meatball sandwich. So if you're a meatball sandwich fan, I really think you'd enjoy this one. Now we're making these loaded chicken queso tacos. So to get this one started in the bottom of my slow cooker, I have a little over a pound of chicken breasts, so two large chicken breasts. And then to the chicken, I just added a tablespoon and a half of taco seasoning along with one cup of queso. You could really use any type of queso you like. I just like this particular one. Next, add in one can of Rotel. And as simple as that, that is all you do for now. This goes on low for six hours. Here we are six hours later. I'm going to shred the chicken at this point. I'm just using my meat masher. I love this thing. I have it linked in my Amazon store if you want to get yourself one, but here's the finished product. I always serve that queso meat inside of smaller um, flour tortillas with cilantro, cheese, lime, and avocado and sour cream on top. My family loves this recipe. This one also makes for great leftovers the next day. 
Now we're getting started on this Cuban pulled pork and it really is awesome. I have my three pound pork butt right here or you could use a pork shoulder. I'm just cutting slits in it just like this and this is really going to give this pork so much great flavor in the end. After I'm finished with that, I set it in my slow cooker and now I have my cilantro. It's about a half a cup of chopped cilantro I'm using. If you don't care for cilantro, you could definitely keep cilantro out of this recipe and and it still will be delicious. So over to my slow cooker, I'm going to be sprinkling the cilantro over the top of the pork. Next, I'll be adding the juice from one orange and the juice from one lime. The rest of the ingredients I'm adding in is a fourth a cup of olive oil and then for the seasonings, go ahead and add in a half a teaspoon of salt along with a fourth a teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of oregano and two teaspoons of cumin. And then the last thing you'll add is four tablespoons of minced garlic, put the lid on top and then this will cook on low for about eight hours. After my pork is completely cooked, it is nice and tender and ready to shred. So I'm just shredding it up with my meat masher. I served my pork alongside of white rice and black beans. I also made sure to pour plenty of the sauce that the pork was cooking in all over the top of everything. That pork has a really nice, fresh tasting flavor about it. If you know me, you know how much I love anything Tuscan chicken, so now that's what we're making. To the bottom of my slow cooker, I'm adding my five chicken thighs. These are boneless, skinless chicken thighs. The reason I'm not using chicken breast is because these chicken thighs will actually be so much more juicy in the end. The simple seasonings that I'm adding to the top of the chicken is just a dash of crushed red pepper flakes, Italian seasoning, and salt and pepper. Now that I'm finished with that, I'm going to head over to my stove and make a really simple sauce. It only has a few ingredients, so I added a tablespoon of butter along with a tablespoon of olive oil. I let it melt down and get hot, and then I added two tablespoons of minced garlic. Once the garlic was fragrant, I added in my third a cup of chicken broth. I brought it up to a simmer and then added in one cup of heavy cream. I'm going to whisk this together and let it thicken. It should take about three minutes, I'd say. Now that it is thickening up, I'm going to add in my three-fourths cup of Parmesan cheese, stir this together, let the cheese melt down, and then that is all you do for this sauce, and it's going to make your chicken taste crazy, crazy delicious. So now back over to my slow cooker, I'm going to be adding my sun-dried tomatoes. I'm using this brand, and it's just a half a cup. I'm sprinkling it all over the top, and then once I'm through with that, you will pour the sauce we made up all over the top of the sun-dried tomatoes and then this will cook on low for about six hours or until your chicken is completely cooked through. You could really serve your Tuscan chicken over anything. I served mine over egg noodles, but you could serve it over any type of noodle, rice, or even cauliflower rice if you wanna do it lower carb. That chicken is so juicy and the creamy sauce over the top is really rich and savory. This crock pot chicken and stuffing is total comfort food for me. In the bottom of my slow cooker right here, I have two large chicken breasts that I cut in half so they could be a little bit smaller. I'm seasoning them on both sides with a dash of Italian seasoning, salt, and pepper. For the stuffing mixture in this medium sized bowl, I'm adding my six ounces of stovetop chicken stuffing mix, and then a half a cup of sour cream, a third a cup of chicken broth, and then one can of cream of chicken soup, and then you are going to mix this mixture all together. Back 
back over to my slow cooker, I have about a pound of trimmed green beans right here. I'm adding half of the amount of green beans over the chicken, and then you are going to spread that stuffing mixture out as even as possible over those green beans. And then the last thing you'll do is add the rest of the green beans over the top of the stuffing. This will go on low for about six hours or until your chicken's completely cooked. My mom used to make a stuffing casserole very similar to this when I was growing up. So this brings me right back to my childhood. Like I said previously, this is definitely comfort food to the max for me. My entire family loves this one, especially my little daughter, Brinley. I have so many more slow cooker videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.